my favorite thing ever it is so good it's a plant-based butter i mean i'm not even plant-based but i just love the taste of this it's so delicious these are the ingredients it's made with organic coconut oil almond oil cashews filtered water and sea salt and it's so creamy i love personally i just love the taste of coconut oil so if you want kind of like a spreadable coconutty thing then this is it mm. these days i'm a savory breakfast person but i mean if i wake up and i have a sweet tooth then i'll lean into it and i'll like have granola or just like something sweet but normally this just hits the spot every single time avocado toast with nutritional yeast and the nutritional yeast oh it just gives it like that cheesy flavor. It's so good. Coffee time. My favorite time. If you guys haven't tried the La Colombe cold brews, oh my gosh, they are next level. I didn't even think coffee in a can could ever be like good, but these are incredible. Shout out to Cicely for putting me on. I need a little straw. I mean, look at that. Look at the foam on the top. I don't know how they do that. It is so good. Mmm. Yes. Yes. Cheers. Now that I've had my coffee and I can start to form coherent sentences, I wanted to talk about something that has really been weighing on me and I just really felt the need to talk about it on here with you guys because I think it's a conversation that needs to be happening more. On September 1st, the state of Texas effectively banned abortions and the Supreme Court let the law stay in effect. The law says that any pregnancy in which a heartbeat can be detected cannot be aborted. So this means that if you're six weeks pregnant, which is before most women even know that they're pregnant, you cannot have an abortion. The law makes no exceptions for rape, sexual assault, or incest. And uh, as if it couldn't get any worse, the law actually incentivizes the public to police abortions. So what that means is that it allows people, anyone living in the state of Texas, to actually be able to sue anyone that's involved in aiding and abetting the abortion after the six week mark. So that can be the abortion provider, the person that drove the person to the abortion, and anyone involved. What's really scary, I think, about this new Texas law is that I think there's a lot of states that would like to follow in Texas's footsteps. And I just think that these kinds of laws controlling women's bodies 
are used to hold women back in society. It's just the opportunity to have a choice. That is what should be protected. Regardless of your own opinion, everyone should have the free will to make decisions for themselves. We should all be able to agree on that. So when I first heard about this law passing, I was just like, what can I do? Like, I wanna do something right now to like help women in Texas, to help any women in society. I, I wanna fight for reproductive rights. Like, what can I do right now? How can I use this anger and this passion to make a positive change? I have three recommendations for you if you're feeling the same way about this. Number one, go into government and be the person that passes laws and bills that change society. As of 2021, women are 26% of the 535 members of Congress, and women are just 34% of US court state judges. So let's bump those numbers up. We need more women in politics. Number two, vote. This is a pretty obvious one, but I think a lot of us don't realize the power that we hold. When people vote, we can elect people who represent us and our beliefs. Of course, the presidential election is super important, but a lot of these smaller elections are equally as important. So you got to make sure that you're voting in your state and local elections so that you can elect representatives who represent you and fight for what you believe in. And number three, which I am super excited about, is October 2nd, mark your calendars, we are doing a women's march in every single state in the United States, and we are gonna march and rally for reproductive rights. There is so much on the line right now, and I think it's so important that we make our voices heard and we make them really loud. So we are going to march for our rights, October 2nd. I'm gonna put the link in the description box below, but you can go to womensmarch.com and you can find or host a march in your state. Also, if you have a couple dollars to donate, I know that they're looking for donations for things like hand sanitizer, masks, all these different things that they have to provide because of the pandemic. So there's my little spiel. I know that it's not exactly a fun, lighthearted topic of conversation, but I think it's so freaking important. And personally, I don't wanna live in The Handmaid's Tale. I don't know about you. So let's put a stop to this before we get to that point. So get started on creating your signs and hopefully I will see you all on October 2nd. I needed to pick a few things up at the grocery store so I thought I would do a quick little grocery store haul for you guys. I love to watch these so let's see what I got. Got some baby spring mix, some cherry tomatoes, shiitake mushrooms. This is the best bread ever. Tartine, whole wheat sesame. I got some roasted chicken breast, a filet of salmon, broccolini, some carrots, onion, and two avocados. And then I got some lilies because the last time I got these, they lasted a really long time. All right, it is lunchtime here in the Hanelius household. And today I wanna to show you guys how I make my all-time favorite salad. It's so, so good. I don't really know what makes it so good, but just all the ingredients really come together. It's crunchy, it's salty, it has like a protein. It just really is super satisfying. So I guess we could call this like my feta chicken salad. So here is what you'll need for this salad. I have baby spring mix, lemon, feta cheese crumbles, chopped walnuts, cherry tomatoes, and chicken breast. For the dressing, it's a balsamic glaze and olive oil, and then some salt and pepper, so pretty simple. So I just add a bit of the spring mix to the bowl, and now we're gonna chop up our freshly washed cherry tomatoes. I just like to half them. Next up, we are going to chop up some cubes of the chicken breast. I, I just like getting this pre-cooked chicken breast 
Um, it's literally just a paleo friendly chicken breast. It has like salt, pepper, olive oil on it. It's just so convenient that this is already cooked and already seasoned and everything. So you can just throw it into stuff, which is nice. And if you wanna make this vegetarian, you can just do like tofu, pre-cooked baked tofu instead of the chicken. All right, so now we are going to start with our toppings. The first thing I'm gonna put in is these feta cheese crumbles. Just throw those in there. My hands are very feta-y, but we're gonna sprinkle in some of our chopped walnuts. Obviously you can do whatever nut you like, but I really like walnuts with this. Now I'm just cutting a bit of a lemon slice put that on top now I'm going to salt and pepper it and finally for the dressing we are going in with some olive oil and then what really makes this whole salad is this balsamic glaze if you guys haven't tried balsamic glaze it's like the hot older brother of balsamic vinaigrette it's like a it's a really thick version of balsamic vinaigrette and it has sugar in it so it's kind of sweet it is so freaking good so yeah this thing is really the cherry on top and there you have it my world famous world renowned prize winning chicken what did i name it feta feta chicken salad <laughs> So that is one part of my lunch today, but I mean, we gotta be honest and transparent here. We eat leftovers in this house and I have like a kind of a small amount of this red sauce pasta I made the other night. So I'm gonna heat this up and have this with my salad. This pasta was really good too. I did um, just like spicy red sauce with um, chicken sausage in it. I cut that up and put it in there and it was really delightful for a little bevy we are gonna do some kombucha i love this flavor this is the healthy kombucha pink lady apple it's so good but i actually like to add a little bit of water to my kombucha like water it down a little bit because it's very strong and like sour maybe that's just me Yum. It's so good. Mmm. Great pairing. All right. I will see you guys at dinner. Hey guys, it's dinner time. And on the menu tonight, we have roasted vegetables, broccolini and carrots with a pan seared salmon. And I'm gonna make like this pesto mayo saucy sauce to put over the salmon and not to chew my own horn but i have gotten very very good at making salmon and so i'm just gonna show you all my tips and tricks okay to make a bomb salmon so let's get started doing is just patting our salmon dry. I find that this really helps the skin get really crispy and just the whole outside of salmon get really crispy and then just super soft on the inside, um, especially because we're going to sear it in the pan. So you just wanna get all that moisture out of the salmon, just patting it dry on all sides. 
and now we're gonna season it so i've always i've seen in like cooking things cooking videos food network that you're supposed to really liberally um salt your salmon which may seem counterintuitive because they're from the salty ocean but i have always just kind of like just very liberally salted my salmon and i just think it no brings out the flavor it's really good i just i do what i'm told that's what i've heard and i just have not questioned it since and it tastes good that way so and then a little bit of pepper and that's it i mean when i'm making salmon i know people like to do like a honey glaze or like a mustard or i mean there's all kinds of stuff you can do obviously if you get bored with your salmon but when it's like a nice piece of like skin on salmon like this is um and i like just got it today it's so fresh like i just want to enjoy the flavor of it um without any craziness um over over seasoning it so and now we're going to heat up the cast iron skillet so I just put some olive oil in the cast iron skillet and the nice thing about using a cast iron skillet for a salmon um, is really just that the, the um, sides of the pan are really high. So if you have any other pan that also has kind of those high sides, what's really nice is that just helps the whole salmon kind of cook evenly, like the, the heat distributes throughout the whole um, fish or whatever you're cooking. So that's what's nice about a pan with kind of those high sides. It just helps it all cook really evenly. What's important is you want the cast iron skillet or whatever pan you're using to get really hot before you put the salmon on because that just really helps the skin get super crispy as well. So I usually just put the olive oil on it, put it on medium, and then I'll flick like some water on it. And if the water sizzles, then it's ready for me to put my salmon on. So while we're waiting for that to heat up, I'm gonna go show you guys how I make the sauce. My mom actually usually makes this sauce when my dad grills salmon and it is so good and it's so simple. So all you do is you combine some pesto with some mayo. It is truly that simple and it just makes this really creamy pesto sauce that is super good on salmon or like a piece of bread and you put the salmon on top and it's just ah. so you grab a little ramekin like so we're gonna take our pesto put a little bit of that in there and a wee bit of mayo and then literally you just mix it together like that and doesn't that just look fancier than your average pesto. <laughs> okay, salmon is in the pan, skin side down first. I'm also gonna toast a piece of bread. I just love having some bread with my salmon. Put a little of the pesto sauce on it. Really delicious. And here you have a gorgeous salmon. Nice and crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside. And our veggies are also done, which look really good. So we're gonna plate this baby up. My favorite meals to make I usually make this once a week it's just in my like weekly rotation of meals I love broccolini because it gets like so crispy this salmon looks amazing mm, I love salmon I really don't like time it when it's in the pan I just keep an eye on it and I feel like it's sort of after I flip it I feel like it's roughly like five to seven minutes that I leave it depending on the size. But just once you see the, the top part starting to get brown, you pretty much know it's done. And I mean, you can't really mess it up too bad. Mm, so good. 